fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to my open TTD Let's Play series. This is a brand new series, and this series is going to be a modded series from start to finish. That's right, series four, a modded series. We'll talk about the mods soon, but let's just talk about a few other things first. First of all, I'm Master Hellish. If you want to know anything more about me, you can check out all my events, my information, my schedule, and all that on masterhellish.net. This game is OpenTTD, which most of you will probably know, but if you want to know anything more about OpenTTD, you can go to OpenTTD.org or go to my YouTube channel where I've got a tutorial series on OpenTTD from start to finish. So that's me and OpenTTD. What is this series? Well, I've already said it's a modded series, but let's have a look at the map. This map is in the temperate environment. And if we just open up the world map here and have a larger look, you can see, there it is, this is what it looks like. There's a large quantity of seas, lakes, and rivers, but not a stupid amount, just a good dottering around. Uh, there's also some hills as well but also some flats too. So we've got a nice variety of hillsides and so forth. This has been randomly generated. So we've got some nice, uh, we've got some water edges, we've got some lakes, some flat land, some hilly land. Uh, should be a good variety here. The map itself is 1000 by 1000. So it's quite big for a single player, but I intend to play this for quite some time. Speaking of time, we're starting in the year January, uh, well, the year isn't January, but the date is the 1st of January 1925. 1925 being the first date of the uh, train that you can first use. That's right, the first steam train is usable in 1925 in a temperate environment. However, we've got some mods, and that changes that a little bit. So, let's go check them out now. Okie dokie, here we go. So we've got some, this is the uh, GRF settings, and we've got some here, here we go. Now, uh, first things first, the FERS Industry Replacement Set, or the FIRS Industry Replacement Set, um, replaces all the standard industries with some new ones. Okay, we still have coal mines in there, but there's new graphics and so forth. So we have a variety of new uh, industries. Now, we we tried this in my Series 3.5 Let's Play, but that was just a short add-on onto the end of Series 3. This is a brand new series from the start, and I'm really looking forward to playing around with these industries. One of the things I really like about them is you get a chain going forward of... Uh, primary industries producing items for secondaries and going forward onto goods and houses and so forth. But you also get a backflow as well of stuff being produced that the primary and secondary industries need, uh, like tools and equipment and so forth. So that is really good. I'm looking forward to working with that. That is the main mod that we're going to be working with. Uh, this is the biggest one, I think, in my opinion. We also have a collection of UK ones. Here we go. We've got some UK towns, some UK waypoints. Uh, some UK town set, which adds um, adds different graphics uh, to the towns. Uh, some ro a road set and some trains. Okay, so apart from the trains, these are mainly just kind of aesthetic things. They're not really that important. But I thought let's go for a bit of a UK theme because, well, hey, I live in the UK. Why not? Maybe in the future we'll do some viewers games with themes of different countries around the world. Um, but for now, we've got a UK set going on. So like I said, we've got some roads, we've got some town bits, uh, their names and some waypoints and bits and bobs all in the UK style. We've also got some UK trains. So these uh, have been added to the game and we'll have a look at them a little later on. Um, I'm looking forward to playing around with the different type, type of trains we've got. And we'll be obviously, um, at this early stage of the game, we'll be starting off with some very basic steam trains to begin with and working our way up. Speaking of working our way up, um, in the upper end of the game, we have available to us the vacuum tube train and vacuum vehicle wagon set and also hover buses so in the future we're still going to have some extra variety some extra levels of complexity once we've really cracked all the basic forms of transportation there's still going to be more in the end game so really we've got a few extra mods uh those ones that i just mentioned uh, for kind of end game scenarios 
And then the other real ones I've mentioned is the tram set. We're going to have uh, trams in the cities. Uh, I've got both a generic tram set and a city tram set. I have no idea why I've got both. Um, kind of just cobble these together and just put in what I thought would be nice. Um, it might be one of these supersedes the other. I'd have to double check. But um, we've got trams. That's the important thing. We've got trams. Um, and if we have a look, we, the other one that I would point out is the industrial stations renewal. Now, this allows us to do some really funky and cool stations. I'm really looking forward to that. And I think it's going to complement the first mod lovely. So those are the new GRF settings. Now, most of my Let's Plays, I use the z base graphics pack. It adds an extra level of graphics detail, which I find very pleasant to the eye. However, because both the trains, the station set and the first mod don't use that extra level of detail and can look quite out of place at the Z base pack, I'm not using it. This series is going to be using just the standard open graphics. So if we zoom in here, you see we've got the uh, standard trees and, and the ground and water. This is a factory from the first mod. This one is a particular is a brickworks. And these um, houses and so forth are meant to be sort of a very UK or a very British way of looking at it. You can tell here that we've got a proper uh, soccer or football stadium uh, here instead of the other graphics that we normally have. So those are all the changes to the game. Um, I've told you a bit about me, I've told you a bit about OpenTTD and the map and the mods. There's not much left to talk about apart from let's do it, let's get into our first game. Um, I think the first thing to do is find a really good starting point and I think because the industries are quite complex and it's something I'm not massively experienced with, let's get some money generated with some good old passengers. That's right, Not th this time we're not doing good old coal. We're doing good old passengers. So uh, let's have a look at the town directory. That's right, we're starting a modded series by not doing any of the industry mods. We will do, don't worry about that. So we're going to organise them by population and sorts of the biggest ones that are at the top. And we're going to go over to the biggest one first, Druntfield, and take a look at it. And we were actually pretty much already there. Druntfield, uh, by a lake, which is quite cool. Um, it's on moderately flat ground. The town itself... Looks like a nice little town. They've got a stadium and so forth. Uh, what is around it, though? Is there any big places nearby? Well, we've got this one up here. 2,000. That's quite a big town. We've got this one over here. 3,000. That is also a big town. Oh, wow. Look at that stately homey type building. Oh, that's fantastic. I haven't seen that before. Um, I'm looking forward to see what these are going to be like in the future. But we've got this whopping great big hill here. So maybe this is not a good starting point. In the future, possibly, but maybe not now. And if I have a further look around, not really too much around in the area. I mean, we've got, we've got this town over here, Fort Prunnington. That looks like quite a nice town. It's got a little church. Um, it's a city as well. We want to be really dealing with cities at the beginning because cities grow faster than towns. It says there, look, city. And here, look, city. All the big ones tend to be cities. Let's have a look at the next one on the list. Um... Let's just pin that and press Dell to clear the screen. Uh, this is our next one. Uh, Fuborn? Fuborn, I think that is. Oh, hang on. That's the other one that we, <laughs> we were looking at already. So the two biggest cities are right next to each other. And then we've got this one. Oh, this one looks quite nice. Uh, Genfing Hill. Genfing Hill on a slight hill near some big hills. Uh, it's got a place called Tedham nearby, which is quite big. That's a city as well. And another one over here called Ladding, uh, Ladding Hatton, I believe. Um, the good news about these ones is on relatively flat land. We do have a lake. Uh, where are we in the world? We're near the south corner-ish. We've got three fairly big towns together. Possibly one there. Oh, there's a, there's a number of large towns around here. In fact, we're not far away from our other two large towns. So maybe we can get all these towns linked up onto one massive network. Oh, that sounds like something we can do in this series. We're going to start, uh, I think, between these two towns. Um, 
they're roughly on well actually I kind of like here for a station but let's just make the trees transparent for a second I'm control and X to bring up the transparency options see if we make the trees transparent we can see that there's a piece of road there so the city isn't blocked off in that direction and over here Tedham probably in this top corner you could get a station in quite nicely hmm Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's. Oh, this this is challenging. This is, this is really quite challenging, because I want a really good start for us. I guess we don't have to go too crazy, do we? We can go with a nice simple station and build up over time. This river's probably going to come out, to be honest. <laughs> uh, if we put if we put a station here, it's going to grow, and we're going to end up with a main line probably coming down the middle here somewhere in between maybe these two towns across this farmland and right in between these two so that i think that's probably a good place to start there there we are then tedham that's where we're starting and in fact um we could probably put our hq right in the middle of tedham but i yeah i'd have to remove a piece of road to do it let's do it okay we're going to start the oh haven't we haven't done our company yet okay company First things first, a uh, new face. I am a male. I'm a male. Uh, I don't want a moustache, thank you very much. And I don't want glasses. I've got blue hair, that's right. My ha And blue hair? No, blue eyes. And let's have that hair. Let's have me in the future when all my hair is disappearing. And I've got a pointy chin and and a, a nose. That That doesn't really look like me. I want a blue tie, though. There we go. There's there's me, maybe. I don't know. Now, uh, for the company name this time, I'm going to get you guys to name the company. Come up with something really cool. Maybe a pun on Master Hellish or Open TTD or maybe something to do with the games or trains or, or transport. But for now, until you guys come up with a name, I'm going to give you a few episodes. I'm going to just call it, uh, we're going to put a temporary name of Hellish Inc. Why not? Standardized. There we go. We're going to put that in there for now. Uh, of course, manager. I am Master Hellish. There we go. And the colour scheme. We are currently orange. Let's leave it orange for now. Maybe we'll change that in the future. Maybe we'll add different bits of colour in. Um, so let's just clear that. There we go. Press Dell to clear that. Press A to bring up railway construction. And I think, yes, why not? Let, let's place our HQ right in the middle of Tedham. Maybe we can bring Tedham into the name of the company if you wish. So F1 to start the game and 13 minutes into the recording. Here we go. We're building our HQ in the town. There we go. Just a little shack for now. And we're going to put a little station in. We're going to see look look at all these different bits of station that we have here. Uh, we have buffer ends, we have uh, different um, industry stations and fixtures but we're going to go with a standard station because it's going to be a passenger station i think passenger one should be default now station length that's going to be something that we're going to be playing around with throughout the series i'm going to be doing a lot of modifications a lot of improving sometimes in these let's plays i do stuff that just looks kind of nice but isn't necessarily efficient i'm going to get a i'm going to try and get a really good balance between efficiency and and what things look like. And to begin with, I'll probably cut corners and then develop it later on. So that's my kind of idea. Number of tracks, well, this is a quite a big town. Let's start with a platform length of five and a number of tracks, two. We can always extend that later. And we'll just pop this in there. We'll pop it in just here. There we are, there's our Tedham station. It cost us £4,180. Our money is going down already. Go away, company information. We don't need that. Right. So, standard trains, standard railways. Oh, this is all quite interesting. Um, what kind of station is this? Are we going to have this as a, as a, as a, a row row or a kind of a pass-through? Um, or are we going to have it as a terminus? Now, I think I'm going to try and avoid terminus stations. Um, when things get busy, it, it does really really make things difficult to have terminus stations then again you never know sometimes it's sometimes it's appropriate 
we'll work it out as we go. So I've got the auto tool. I'm going to bring this out. Oh, hang on. The game's paused. Let's uh, let's unpause it and start building. So we're going to put in a row row station. So we're going to come out. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Now we this river is really really in the way and. I'm thinking it's going to be going eventually, so the problem is how much is it going to cost to remove it? £10,000 just to remove that little piece. Tell you what, we will. We'll just remove that one bit for now. There we are. The the, the swans can walk over the top, uh, or or badgers or whatever swimming in the water. Um, they will have to just dodge the trains. So, um, before uh, Doc Bassey comments on this video and says... You're using dock stations. Well, technically, I'm using what we what we call in uh, in my community at uh, dock stations. Yes, there we are. Some lovely little train depots for our trains to come out of. Um, dock stations are basically uh, just normal row row stations. But what you do, you put signals in um, path signals. Which way? The standard electric. Oh, hang on a minute. We shouldn't be using electric. We shouldn't be using electric signals. This is it's the age of steam. We should be using steamy signals. There we are, steamy signals. Um, the semaphore signals. Um, but yes, we, we won't be using one-way signals. The idea is, is if a train wants to go to a depot, it can do, and then it can get back into the station. So for now, that's all we're going to be doing at Tedham. We're going to link it up to the other end, but we need another end. So I'm thinking, is this too close? Is... Uh, ladding Hatton too close? I'm not sure. We have got a bit of a, a, a problem with the land height here. If we, um, let's see, if we have a look, you can see along this edge here, the town goes up. So I'm thinking, I mean, I, if I'm doing a terminus station, I like to put it in a corner so that you can get some really good, really good spread on it and you can uh, get things stuffed in there quite easily. Um, However, if you're doing row row stations, I like to put them on the side like this to give you room to get in and out. And of course, that's going to expand this way. Ted and we'll just have to wrap around us. Um, so if we're going to do a row row, and I would prefer to do row rows, we want it on the side. But then round here, there's a lot of river and roads that are all in the way. Uh, this building here is not actually part of the standard city. It is a petrol station. So it's an industry. We can't delete that. Um, I'm I'm tempted to put it the station up here. Um, the town will eventually expand into this area. So let's do it. Let's put a station in. Let's put it the same size. I'm just going to bring up the transparency options again and bring the trees on. And I don't want to adjust the land height too much. But let's pop in the station there like that. I'm going to press A for the auto tool. I'm going to bring the land height out just a little bit, just by a few squares. It's going to cost us a, a thousand to do that. Um, and we're going to do the same station again. Okay, we're going to get rid of all the bits that I accidentally did. And then we're going to bring the track down. Maybe in future we'll raise this up. It's definitely going to be bigger in the future. Um... And again, I don't know where this track's going to go yet. I need to figure it out. So let's do that. There we go. And a couple of depots. Not there, you silly boy. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so we have uh, two basic stations in. We've picked our starting point in the world. The trees are still transparent. Let's turn them back. There we go. Um, now connecting these up I'm thinking just a simple loop for now I mean I could just do this although diagonals are good usually aren't they so what we'll do is we'll come down here a certain distance we'll come down here until we drop off this hill and as soon as we dropped off the hill we'll go diagonal until we hit this line here which is perfect there we go um, diagonals are good, uh, mainly because if you have a train going around a corner like this with, um, or even a corner like this, if it's long enough, the train will slow down a little bit. Um, uh, and we don't want, we want to try and avoid that. 
um, as much as possible. And it's not always the case, but as long as the diagonal part is longer than the train length, you should be fine. So this nice diagonal will do that. Also, uh, diagonals are a shorter route. Um, going along that diagonal is shorter than going all the way down here and then all the way across there. Oh, I didn't mean to put that track in. I meant to hold shift. My shift button wasn't working. Oh, well, my finger on the shift button wasn't working. Anyway, we've got most of our money back. The only problem is around here at the moment, we're not, we've got that 90 degree turns, but it's going to slow down and go into the station anyway. Um, sometimes around stations, I don't mind these turn so much um, it is not a 90 degree turn as such it's a 45 and then another 45 within one square um, that on the edge of the square is a 90 degree turn and that is not allowed I've disabled it so there's one part of our route let's get the other part in should we come over this end can do let's bring it to there Let's bring it to there. Again, we want a diagonal in here, really, but this is probably a fairly temporary track. Um, and we're going to figure out what's better to do it with it later on. Um, now, this one, we need to go up and over the river. So let's put a bridge in, because we've got to go up anyway. There we go. Keep going forward. And the same down here. We've got to go down, so let's go down and over the river. Little suspension bridge, why not? I love a nice little suspension bridge. And then we've got to connect these up, but we've got this kind of hill, which makes it very difficult. Um, tell you what, let, let's leave this one as straight for now. Uh, oh dear. Oh, we've, we've just ran into some road. Well, I tell you what, I'm sure the town won't mind. I'm sure the town won't mind at all. Let's do that and that there we go well time to pop some signals down uh one-way path signals we want trains going um forward in this direction i think yeah that'll do um which means we're going around in that direction now to do that uh, to place all those signals at once all i'm doing is i'm placing let's just make the oh cool there's my logo uh making the nope that's my logo again Let's try pressing the correct keys. There we go. Uh, we're making um, the trees transparent by doing control on X. Um, but yes, we put our signal in like this, the way we want it, and we hold control and drag. And there we go, signals. Well, um, time for a passenger train, I think. Okay, so seen as our HQ is at Tedham. Uh, let's start with a train from Tedham. Let's open up Tredham, De Tedham Depot number two. New vehicles. Now this is where we're going to be able to choose what we really, really want. Uh, okay, so we've got a tiny little tank engine, which costs not very much at all, but it's 30 mile an hour maximum speed. Its maximum reliability is actually really quite good, 80%. We've got a little tram engine, little steam tram engine um again light freight 45 mile an hour probably need something a little bit bigger than that um 14 000 pounds buys us a 50 mile an hour light freight um 80 percent reliable steam engine there uh, we've got some bigger engines here so uh 55 mile an hour but it's got more horsepower this one i think yes it can pull harder uh what's this one passengers this one's designed for passengers Oh, it's, um, it's got quite a high uh, amount of power, really quite a good speed. The maximum reliability is not really as high as I'd like it. Uh, the freight engine is designed for heavy freight, uh, slower speeds but ma more power. And this steam engine here, express passengers, 95 miles an hour. Wow. Uh, let's compare that to this one here, which is only 75 miles an hour. Uh, reliability is a lot better of this uh pacific um steam engine the uh the 462 it's quite expensive we don't have enough money but we'll take out a loan we'll take out another hundred thousand pound if you want to take out the whole max loan you can just hold control and click borrow loan um and there we are we're going to have a couple of these i say there we are 
So let's build one of them. There we are. Train number one. And we need some carriages for him. Now, we could carry passengers and mail. Hmm. I think that's probably a good idea. So let's put some passengers in this. So, um... Now, how long... Are we? Our stations are five long, so... Let's see. If we put a few more carriages in, that brings us up to there. Two mail vans on the end. Brings us up 4.4. One more passenger carriage. 4.9. Okay, that, we just need to move the passenger carriage. There we go. Now, to me, that looks like a, a, a pretty decent steam train. I'm looking forward to this. Um, so, uh, we need some orders. So, let's give it some orders. Uh, there we go. Train 1 orders. Go to Tedham. Then, when you're finished going to Tedham, go to Lend Lending Hatton. L L Ladding Hatton. I'll get it right one day. And that's it. Just keep going backwards and forwards between the two, please. Thank you very much. Um, but before you do leave the depot, we're going to hold control and click on this button, which clones the train. And it actually... Oh. Oh, we haven't got enough. And even if we take out our maximum loan, we still haven't got enough, have we? No. We're about £12,000 short. We need to make some money. Let's get this train on the road. Well, not on the road, on the rails. You know what I mean. Go! And here we go. Our train is heading to Tedham. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, let, let's follow our train. Oh, there we go. So the first visit a train does to a station uh, doesn't actually pick up any passengers. Um, as you can see here, the train is empty. There's nothing in there. I mean, we can see its capacity and its information and so forth. Um, the train slowed down a little bit going up the hill. That's not too bad. But on the first visit, it kind of just registers that, that, that a train is there. And then we get um, passengers and mail coming in. Now, something that uh, I forgot to mention is, is that we have got cargo distribution on. So that's going to be something that probably affects us later in the game. But there we go. Our first train's going. Now, uh, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Hey, hey, look at it go. And it's going to come all the way around to Ladding Hatton. And it's going to do the same thing there. See, there's nothing waiting at the moment, but as soon as the train stops, now there's passengers waiting there. And it's registered that that station has a surface, su surface service with passengers and mail. And the train is on its way. 65 mile an hour, 66, 70. Is struck, ah, it doesn't get up to full speed until about now. And it's only just got to Tedham. <laughs> Never mind. We've got 110 passengers, something like that, waiting at the station. Uh, as you can see, where is it? Ah, here we go. The train is loading up quite nicely. It's almost full. Not quite, but mail here. Look at that mail. Uh, the mail carriages haven't got a lot in, but pretty much full on passengers, so let's just get round to the other side and... S oh, God, it broke down. Oh, well, never mind. It's it's 4,600-ish 4, in costs, so we really want this to be um, quite a good payoff. Um, but we're going to find out soon uh, as we come into the station. Come on, we need lots of money from this. We, this is supposed to be... A reliable source of income. Money, 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 money. And come on. Yes, eight grand. Not bad, considering that the train's actually been around twice. So it's cost us about half as much, really, to run it. Well, we're going to leave it there today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, leave your thoughts, ideas, and questions down in the comments section below, along with your suggestions for the name of the company. I'm looking forward to this series. Hope you are too. That's all from me for now. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.